History gives us at least three great personalities who were so significant in their time that their last name became an adjective. I'm thinking of the Macedonian king Pyrrhus, who gave us the Pyrrhic victory. I'm thinking of the 20th century novelist George Orwell, who gave us the Orwellian dystopia. And I'm thinking of the man I would like to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about today, the 16th century Florentine Niccolo Machiavelli. Now, few names in history conjure up more negative emotions, more negative thoughts than Machiavelli and Machiavellianism. If someone says you're Machiavelli, they are not paying you a compliment. The name is synonymous with lies, deception, duplicity, even violence and murder, but all of it in the gain for power. So if you're willing to do anything, say anything, sacrifice your morals, sacrifice honesty, sacrifice your own people just so you can attain power and keep it, well, Machiavelli is said to be your man. And where does this come from? Well, he wrote a lot. Machiavelli wrote a lot of plays. He wrote a lot of scholarly works. Most of what he wrote were on actually republics and how to govern free societies. But he's not famous for that. No, he's famous for a short work called The Prince. I have several copies, but I like to keep this copy for sentimental reasons because uh, I am from the Gulf Coast, and this is one of the very few books I have that survived Hurricane Katrina. But the uh, as small as this book seems to be, I want to show you a lot of this book are introductions and notes. But this center point here, now this is a very small print, but this center point right here is the prints. This is what was so important that we have the adjective Machiavellianism. It is what was so important that hundreds of years after he's dead, everybody on earth knows who Nicola Machiavelli is. It's for this small little publication uh, that he maintains a reputation almost equal with the devil, or at least, uh, if not equal to, at least, uh, at, at least one of his demons. And I'll tell you to that point, I have to tell you, I don't just let my copy float around anywhere. No, sir, I, 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 I know that I keep, I keep it between two Bibles. I have a Catholic and a Protestant Bible because that's the only safe place for Machiavelli to go. It's got to go between Isaiah, Maccabees, and the Gospel of John. It's the only, it, otherwise, it'll have you thinking by telling a few lies, you can accomplish something you couldn't otherwise. And honestly, if you take the common understanding of Niccolo Machiavelli, that would not be the wrong takeaway. Because essentially what he says is, in the prince, is you have to govern strong and people are going to try to overthrow you from governing strong. Now, does he say, speak honestly and openly to the people? Does he say, make pe sure people are well-educated and well-informed so that when you talk to them, you can explain why what you believe is best for the city-state of Florence or any other uh, political body? <laughs> no, no, indeed not. I wanna, I'm gonna uh, give you just a few quotes uh, from Machiavelli's, just this is from the prince. He who seeks to deceive will always find someone who will allow himself to be deceived. Uh, this is a truism. I don't think it's the most profound thing ever written, but it's a truism, and it explain and it's sort of in the line of what Machiavelli wants to talk to you about. The vulgar crowd is always taken by appearances, and the world consists chiefly of the vulgar. So he's prepping his ruler. He's saying, look, don't feel bad about deceiving them. Horrible, bad people are always easily to be deceived. And most of the world is horrible and bad. So they're asking to be deceived. Uh, he, um, he famously would say, if you, can, if you have to choose between being loved and feared, it's best to be feared. He goes on and on. There, are just, If you want to pull up quotes from Machiavelli's The Prince, just Google search it. There, there are endless numbers of quotes. And sometimes he gets reduced to nothing but quotes. Um, there's actually a lot, there's actually a good bit more context for it. 
But I want to offer, just as a exercise, uh, a little bit of a different understanding of what I think the prince is. Because the typical understanding of the prince is that when the Medici family came to power, when the magnificent Lorenzo de' Medici came to power uh, and threw Machiavelli and his people out, they tortured him, they imprisoned him, then they banished him away from uh, the main part of Florence. For he basically rotted away in boredom for the next 20 years. The idea that most people put forth is that Machiavelli wrote The Prince. He was hoping that Lorenzo de' Medici would see it and be so impressed with the concise way in which he could sum up politics for the day that he would be called back into service. One of his biographers, uh, there are several really interesting and I don't always know how to say good, but we'll say fun biographies of of, of um uh, Machiavelli, was written uh, by uh, Miles Unger. And I'm going to read from this. He says that the prince was something of a job application. Uh, and that's how people are often taught. When I first learned of Machiavelli was in the 10th grade in Miss Cochran's classroom. Anybody who went to Pascagoula High School may will remember uh, how much we loved Miss Cochran's class. It's the first time I'd heard of Machiavelli. And that was sort of how she introduced it, was this was somebody trying to get back into power. And that's pretty well accepted. But I'm not so sure it should be pretty well accepted. And just as a, for no reason other than just the, the fun, the thought experiment of it, I want to put forth a little bit of a different idea. Machiavelli clearly believed not in the autocracy of the Medici, but in a republic, a quasi-constitutional uh, republic not an American style modern 21st century democratic republic that way he was he wasn't there yet but the fact was he was moving in that direction that's where almost all of his writings are on very few people read those but that's what he wrote almost exclusively about I don't think when he was writing the prince he was really thinking by telling Lorenzo de' Medici, don't worry about what God thinks. Do whatever you want to. First of all, I don't think Lorenzo de' Medici needed to be told that. I don't think Machiavelli thought he needed to be told that. I'll tell you what I think the prince really is. I think, I think that Machiavelli had participated for a few years in governing a republic. I think he thought republics were the wave of the future and that the Medici were pulling Florence, which is one of the wealthiest cities in the entire world, if not the wealthiest city in the world at the time. It was pulling it backwards, that it was pushing against the Renaissance that was coming. And he wrote the prince not to ingratiate himself with the great Lorenzo, but to give a middle finger to all the people who were around him, to the generals and the advisors. I don't think he was saying, hey, look how smart I am. I can help advise you. I think what, what Machiavelli was saying was, I know exactly what you're doing. Grand empires take hard work. They take sophisticated thought. They take somebody playing chess. All you're doing is checkers. I'm going to tell you in a short little pamphlet everything you've ever done and everything you're ever going to do. And I think that's what he did. I think he exposed them for the liars, the frauds, the deceivers that they were. I don't think he ever intended on working for Lorenzo de' Medici. Uh, and I think it was a middle finger to the people who essentially replaced him. I might be completely wrong about that. I certain, this is certainly not an idea shared by many historians, but I will tell you this. I was involved in politics for 26 years. So most of that as an advocation over many states, some of it as a profession. Out of all of those years, there were only five of those years in which I held a position that could even be called important. And in those five years, there were only about 15 months I did anything that was important. 
Now, I don't mean I don't care about the other stuff. I do. But I mean, as far as actually needing to be there, that was about it. And then it ended and people got tired of me and I got tired of them and they get tired of me. Uh, it ended. And I can see somebody sitting back, looking at the people who came after them and just being a little petty, just being a little angry, especially when it's been festering for a little while and just write it. And if you're a writer and a playwright and a philosopher as Machiavelli was, I think that's what you do. So I think it may be ironic that we see the prince as and Machiavelli as someone uh, or, or we read the prince and therefore use the word Machiavelli to mean someone who was duplicitous, when in fact it may have been that Machiavelli was simply calling out duplicitous people for the lying scumbags that he thought they were, and he might have been right. Or he might have needed a job. I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, tell me what you think about Machiavelli. And uh, by the way, if you know anybody else whose names have become adjectives, write those down too so I can steal them for future videos. Thank you.